Hey kids, it's me, Joey Ramon here, and you're watching Fulia Metal. Fulia Metal está começando agora nesse momento. Muito bem, o programinha começando agora. Hoje, convidado especialíssimo, especialíssimo, eu diria, Mr. Joey Ramon. Vai ser o nosso entrevistado de hoje. Ainda mais, teremos um bloquinho exclusivo de Ramon. Teremos êxito dos Bruce Dickinson de fundo. Estaremos ouvindo essa banda aqui dentro da Pira Olímpica. Vamos lá. O único álbum que os Ramones assinaram a produção ao lado de Daniel Ray. Tá vendo aqui? A foi o inclusive a primeira turnê que os Ramones fizeram, foi exatamente precedeu o lançamento desse álbum. Portanto, a gente vai começar esse programa com Megadeth, mas já veremos um trecho de Joey Ramones já mandando muito. Eles fizeram um dos primeiros shows da banda, foi ao lado de Johnny Winter. Johnny Winter é aquele bluesman albino, bluesman rock and roll man, também guitarrista. O cara ali junto 20 mil pessoas, Joey Ramones vai contar a história. Vamos lá, começando o programa. Tiny place. You prefer to, like playing this kind of small venues than big venues. Like you are going to to play to six thousand people in well, Argentina. I, I like um, I like mixing it up. You know, I mean, small places are nice. It's intimate. It's personable. Uh, it's fun. It's real loud. It's real sweaty. You know, but um, the larger places is fun once in a while too. You know, and a lot of people can see it, and uh, it's kind of cool. You know. About, talking about record deal, like the first record deal, I heard that in 75 you did a, some gigs with Johnny Winter for a Blue King record. Blue King record, you played for 20,000 people. Do you remember that? Yeah, well, it was a, we were um, we were on trial that that night. Uh, it was kind of like an audition, uh, not an audition, but um, yes, in a sense, of auditioning for this record label, uh, Blue Sky Records. It was uh, David Johansson's label. And uh, New York Dolls, uh, yeah, when he was when he I think he went solo when he went after yeah, the Dolls, and uh, and it was Johnny Winter's label, I think. Yeah, it was Johnny Winter's label. I think maybe not, but um, anyway, that's um, so we were kind of like uh, we were on, you know, we, and it was like, and they didn't uh, bill us or anything, we nobody even knew we were playing, so like uh, when we came out. All Johnny Winter's fans thought uh, it was Johnny Winter coming out. And we came out and we were playing music that no one ever, ever had heard before. Totally alien to everyone. And, uh, and people uh, didn't really know quite what to expect and they didn't take it so well. <laughs> no, no. Sentiu a risadinha de Joey Ramone. Grande figura, nosso interessado de hoje, programa especialíssimo. Que agora teremos aqui um bloquinho de cartas antes de ver mais um pouquinho a entrevista com Joey Ramone. Primeira carta que já tem um tempinho, confesso que está sumida, desaparecida ali nos meus negócios, mas assim novamente. Sérgio Ferreira Dias, Belo Horizonte, grande cidade de Belo Horizonte, pediu êxodo. Pediu três clipes, não temos nenhum desses. Aliás, não tem nem que tem clipes. Bonda de Blood, by Blood, nome do álbum, aliás, é muito lógico do êxodo. Pirei, não logo, botei Objection Overruled. Espero que te agrade, êxodo é uma grande banda que nunca decolou, infelizmente. E outra cartinha, Michele Meira Alberto. São Benedito Jaú, São Paulo. Pediram algumas bandas, aliás, uma carta muito simpática. Algumas bandas, assim, principalmente de hard rock, mandei uma das que eu mais gosto, que é Lynch Mob, banda de George Lynch. Já tocou no Dokken Guitar, exatamente. Agora nós continuamos aqui. Joey Ramone vai contar um pouquinho sobre o antológico cenário Nova Yorkino no meio dos anos 70. Tibi Dibi, Max, Sansa City, Joey Ramone agora. Vá lá. Bom, no beginning, like, I heard that in 76, when you've been to UK, like, England, Pat Smith was supporting you, and I love Pat Smith. How, how was that? Like, New York scene by that time was very united uh, as I well as I yeah I mean the thing was in New York City there was nowhere to play it was only um, Max was Kansas City but you had to have a recording deal so we we kind of found uh, CBGB which was, was um, like a, a a bar on the Bowery and you know kind of like um, and like it was just uh, it was initially it was supposed to be like a bluegrass bar but it didn't become one didn't happen that way and television was the first band to play there and then um we we were the second and uh and it was a good place i mean and you know we would encourage other bands to come and play down there and um after a while there was a whole contingency of, of artists you know like blondie and patty smith and richard hell and the voidoids and uh, Well, first, the Heartbreakers, the first year in the Heartbreakers. With John Thunder. John Thunder, right, right. And, um, 
it's true that there were some bands that just play in Mexican City and there was the band the band that used to play in CBGB. Well, they tr they they tried to make it that way. They tried to make it if you played Max, then you couldn't play CBGB. And they would try to make bands sign like contracts. Uh, we would never sign any contracts because um, you know we you know we play both places. You know we didn't want to you know. But um, the Heartbreakers would play mostly Maxes, and uh, and there was kind of like that junky decadence kind of scene over at Maxes, you know. But but the Heartbreakers would play CBGB too, you know. You know? And um, I don't know where we preferred, but I think CBG was sounded better, you know. But like Max was more of like a, a decadent scene, a decadent hangout. I don't know, they're both fun, you know. Estamos de volta com experimental. Chegou agora de falar de Com Kittness. Com Kittness, uma banda de Santa Bárbara do Oeste. Simplesmente na semana passada tiveram tudo queimado, todos os artigos pessoais da banda, ou seja, desde fotos, fotolitos, negativos pistas, etc, etc, tudo queimado em fundo criminoso. Estamos aqui para colaborar com os produtos, com o Se você tiver algum material dele, seja foto, de o que for, mande para eles. Vamos lá, endereço com o Kittner. Olha lá, Ruiná, São Antônio, 630, Santa Bárbara do Oeste, São Paulo, está aí o CEP também. Colabore, que tem uma tremenda sacanagem que fizeram com essa bela banda que vai lançar o seu primeiro álbum, Number 1, é o nome do álbum. Enfim, continuando por aqui, teremos mais Bruce Dickinson, Semana que vem vai ter trechinho de entrevista com o Bruce Dixon, vai ter trechinho de entrevista com o Fica Firol, mas agora tem o Bruce em vídeo, que é inerta o nome do vídeo, mas antes, nosso convidado especial voltará a falar mais um pouquinho sobre a retirada dos Ramones, nosso convidado especial de hoje, Joey Ramones, com muito orgulho. Vá lá. O que é sobre o retirement? Eu sei que você quer muito sobre os fãs, os real loyal fãs que você tem. Isso é um real retirement? Ou algo assim? Eu não sinto muito... I'm not going to be, I don't feel like I'm, I'm not retiring, but the Ramones are retiring. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there's a lot of things I like to do while I'm, I'm in the Ramones, all the projects. I like, I like doing, um, still working with artists that are interesting, that are doing cool things or, you know, something that, um, like it. I got recently, I guess about a year ago, I got involved with Addicted to Noise. Uh, it's, um, it's the first really cool cutting edge rock and roll magazine on the internet. And I met a lot of great people and uh, they told me what they really want to do uh, with me is that they want to start a radio station on the internet. You like a lot of radio Yeah, I, I always thought radio, you know, like I grew up on AM radio and then free form FM radio. Mm -hmm. Well, I was like, I always, um, I always had a, a special kind of thing for radio, you know. So, so I mean, what I was doing when I did the, the noise initially was, um, I'd write, I'd do these road reports. I'd write about life on the road with the Ramones all over different, you know, different countries, different, you know. It was, it was cool. It was good, it was good. And it was fun. It was a new experience, me and um. My editor was uh, is Dan uh, uh, Yu Health. Which used to work with Lester Banks at Free Magazine, and uh, and and the magazine is really cool. You know, it's like people that are um, a lot of radio stations in America have um, addicted to noise um, on their on their you know that, that website on their computers. That's where they get all their music news, and even MTV in America gets it, it gets it from the addicted to noise, you know? and. Um, so this radio thing started up. Um, I did my first show. On Mo it's, it's up March 1st. It's up right now. It's called Joey Ramone's Radio Coup. Just putting the band and the pieces are coming back. What do you think? Is the right moment well, like to. I think it's purely financial the fact that we're coming back, of, of course. Um, and the sex does not aren't the sex pistols anymore. I mean, it was, there was a time when it was. You know, when it worked. I mean, and even the first time around, the Sex Pistols were just a creation of Malcolm McLaren's genius to sell his sweaters in his sex shop, basically, you know. It, yeah, it was a fashion thing. It was a, a kind of a sham, you know, a kind of a, a fashion ploy, you know what I mean? It, was, it wasn't It was like they were a band that formed, you know, the way the Ramones formed and said, yeah, you know. And I mean... Uh, you know, we like the Sex Pistols music and all that, and the whole thing, but it wasn't, you know, it was superficial. 
and now it's a joke that they're coming back. I mean, now they're they're bloated, they're balding, you know, old farts. You know, it's like who wants to see that? I mean, Sid Sid's dead. I mean, he, you know, I mean, he was a major part of the Sex Pistols, you know. And like, you know, in the beginning when Glenn Matlock was in the band, they didn't they didn't want him in the band. Now he's back in the band, right? So it's like a, a bunch of very hypocritical, I'd say, you know. But I think they'll do very well, make a lot of money, and uh, kids will get to see the Sex Pistols. They think. Estamos vamos experimentar o especial com o Ramon Patio. Estamos ouvindo de fundo Halfway Saint, um dos álbuns mais pesados do Ramon, excelente Ramon. Aliás, quem tiver Joe Ramon nas suas entrevistas já falou sobre o programa novo de rádio dele, a Big Hit to Noise. Falou sobre o cenário de Nova York, falou sobre os primeiros shows. E agora vai falar também um pouquinho sobre a mídia, até a volta dos sexistas que manifestou aí Joe Ramon. E agora como é que era a mídia, o comportamento da mídia e do público no começo de carreira do Ramon? Hoje você já está muito bem sabendo. Hoje em dia todos adoram os Ramones, crítica, público, etc. Na época, quase era assim. Veja agora o Jerry Ramones falando. Uma das coisas que eu acho que foi a maior parte da reação das pessoas que nós vimos como os Ramones no começo. Ah, isso é legal. 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 It wasn't like it is today, you know. It's like kind of making like um, like fans would come out, and a lot of culty type people, would, you know, were those of those fans, like the Warhol crowd, and um, just people like like Alan Vega from Suicide was one of the original fans, and um, and some of the cockheads, you know. Uh, I don't know. It's um. It was pretty wild and decadent, and but it was cool, and uh, and it was just kind of like word of mouth, you know. It was just like a, maybe three, and then five, and ten, you know, you know. And then uh, some, of, I guess, of our earliest friends were like you know Andy Warhol and uh, Danny Fields, you know, and um, you know a lot of kids, a lot of some kids in other bands, you know. But mostly it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't like the street kid yet. You know, but it, then it became that way. You know, word of mouth. You know, the best way. That is the best way. That, whether uh, whether it be then or today, you know. I mean, if the people like you, then then you're in. You know, then you know, then it's real. You know, kids. You know, if it's you know, if no one um, for the media to make a band or break a band is kind of superficial. You know, or oh, the media at that time. Did they help you or? Um, at the time, uh, we started. Uh, then we started getting written up in the Village Voice and uh, uh, rock scene later um, magazine at Lisa Robinson and Richard Robinson uh, and the Soho Weekly News and yeah, I mean um, people liked us. You know, we were we were different. You know, we were doing some totally new. You know, and something that not you know no one had really heard before quite like us. You know, yeah. I mean, I guess the, you know, like prior to us were, you know, like uh, New York Dolls and the Stooges, and you know, but uh, you know, we were doing something our own thing. What do you think that the Ramones did, like, keep it up all those years, you know, playing and having this fans? What do you think is the most important thing about the Ramones? Well, the Ramones care. I mean, it was always we always we take a lot of pride in what we do, and we we enjoy what we do. We, you know, we love music. We love making the kind of music that we do, and it's off fun, basically. This is like off fun, you know. And people say, do you still enjoy doing it after all these years? And yeah, you know, if you didn't enjoy it, we wouldn't do it. You know, I mean, uh, you gotta enjoy it to do it and do it as well as we do. You know, because if you don't enjoy it, it's gonna be sloppy and it's gonna. It's gonna be obvious that you're just miserable, you know. People, I mean, people know they they can see right through. I mean, you know when somebody's doing something that's real, when someone's doing something that's that's uh, fake or like there's no heart involved at all, you know. Were you like these like since the beginning, since Dusk and Snipers, those bands? Uh, well, I've always been a rock and roll fan all, all my life, you know, since I was a little kid, you know. And uh, I always knew that's what I wanted to do, you know. Muito bem, muito bem. Esse foi Joe Ramone, então falando um monte sobre sua existência nos Ramones, 
Só uma retificaçãozinha aí no final você vê aí. Dusk é Dusk. Dusk era a bateria de Mark Dallas. O Batera era Mark Dallas, uma banda antológica também, dois álbuns ali no meio dos anos 70. Mas Dusk foi uma das primeiras bandas que Joey Ramone teve na sua vida. Com K no final. É isso aí que você sentiu aí. Todo mundo. Uma retrospectiva dessa grande banda que disse está abandonando os palcos. Vamos aguardar. Apenas muitos fãs aí ficaram assim, pô, meu. Último show do Ramon, que pena, é uma grande banda sem sombra de dúvida. Semana que vem tem mais, a gente vai ver simplesmente o novo de Psycho Michael. Uns acabam, outros estão recomeçando Psycho Michael. Pra quem não sabe, é Mike Muir, vocalista do Pixar Tennis, outra banda que acabou. Ele já tá retomando de repente o Ramon no futuro aí. Vai vir com uma outra banda, Johnny também. E temos mais, se você quiser saber, mais a cara metade dos Ramon, de Johnny Ramon, as opiniões dele. Vive agora no palco, teremos duas edições, sexta-feira, 9 horas da noite. Domingão, meio-dia, então, a outra metade dos Ramones em pleno palco MTV com grande ligado. Vamos ficando por aqui com esse experimental na cabeça. Ah, 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 ah.